Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, today I shall discuss about the direct and indirect band semiconductors. Okay, because most of the electronic materials are basically semiconducting in nature. And uh, today we shall give some inside story inside of the direct and indirect band gap semiconductor. First thing is that how band is formed in a material. Do you know how band is formed in a material? Because we are talking about the valence band and the conduction band. And if you look at this PowerPoint slide, you will see that there are two bands. We have discussed it in my last class also. The upper one is known as the conduction band and the lower the upper one is known as the conduction band and the lower one is the valence band and they are separated by a gap which is known as band gap of the material. But how this band forms? How this band forms? The band is formed because of the interaction and overlapping of a large number of electronic levels in a material. Suppose let us talk about the silicon. How many electrons are there in silicon? 14. How many electrons are there? 14 number of electrons are there, right. Now, out of this 14 electrons, if I can divide it into 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 3 s 2, etcetera, then what you find? You will find that in 1 s level, there are 2 electrons, right. Then in 2 s level, there are 2 electrons. Then in 2 p level, how much? 6. Okay. Then the 3 s level and finally, 3 p level. Right. So, you see that the lower levels or that means when n equals to 1 or 2, 1 s or 2 s or 2 p, those levels are full basically and they are also very close to the nucleus, but 3 s and 3 p levels are further away from the nucleus. So, now if you take a number of silicon <coughs> atoms n number of silicon atoms, okay. if they come closer, then what will happen? These electron levels will split into a large number of energy levels. So, that means, because of the splitting of the energy levels, okay, because of the splitting of the energy levels, the bands are formed basically. One electron level is split into many electron levels why this splitting takes place? Why this splitting takes place? To the energy level. Yes, basically if many electrons, many atoms come together, if you force many atoms okay, to come together, then what will happen? They will overlap, the electron levels are basically will overlap, they will interact among themselves and that is Pauli exclusion principle, because in all the levels only 2 electrons in any level basically 2 electrons of opposite spin can be accommodated. So, when they interact, so because of the Pauli's exclusion principle, they will align themselves basically they will split themselves into a large number of levels. Okay. So, for n number of silicon atoms what will happen? Each electron energy level will split into n number of levels. What is the value of n? Basically 10 to the power 22. Okay. Silicon has 14 electrons and n is 10 to the power 22 atoms, say n is 10 to the power 22 atoms are there. So, innumerable huge number of electron levels will be created. Basically, all the levels will split, each level will split into 10 to the power 22 levels. 
right. So, suppose this is a label, so that will split into a large number of labels. This is the lower limit of the splitting and this is the upper limit of the splitting. Similarly, there is another label, it will split into a large number of labels. Okay. Then these labels will form the band, conduction band and valence band. And, the, uh, and if you go more deep inside in the story, then you have to take result of the quantum mechanical treatment. Okay. Schrodinger wave equation we have to solve, then you can fully understand how it splits and other uh, conditions are there like the wave nature of electron, then your uh, Pauli exclusion principle. So, those things are there. So, now for our semiconducting material class, only two bands are required the conduction band and the valence band and the bands are formed because of the splitting of the energy levels in a material. Mostly we are concerned about silicon. So, I have given the example of silicon. You can take example of other thing also. In textbook you will find that the example is given for carbon where the diamond like structure is there. Okay. So, now if you see that this conduction band and valence band are there in this picture and they are separated by a band gap, the band is basically parabolic in nature we have discussed earlier also. And I also informed you that in the y axis there is a there is the energy axis, it is the energy axis and in the y x, x axis it is basically the wave vector or momentum axis. Now, I shall show you how they are interrelated, okay? how they are interrelated. You know that P equals to m into V, I am avoiding the vector notation. Okay? Here you know that the momentum is a vector, velocity is a vector. I am avoiding the vector vector notation that is not required in our case. So, P equals to m v. Now, this is equals to h bar k, right. What is h bar? h bar is the Planck's constant and what is k? k is the wave vector and k equals to twice pi by lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. Okay. Now, E equals to half m v square that you know that is the kinetic energy. In our case it is the electron kinetic energy that is equals to p square by twice m because if you put v equals to p by m from this equation here then it will be p square by twice m. That means that is equals to h bar square k square by twice m right h bar square k square by twice m because p equals to h bar k. So, that means E k diagram here you see that E k diagram this is E this is k is nothing but the E p diagram. Okay. So, if you plot E as a function of p or if you plot E as a function of k the nature will be same it is parabolic in nature. But what is the implication of parabolic nature of a band gap? What is the implication? The implication is huge because if you take this equation E equals to h bar square k square by twice m then one thing is that the curvature of these bands, the curvature of these bands is different you see. Okay? The curvature of this band is basically different. Now, how the curvature is determined mathematically? How the curvature mathematically is determined? By? But suppose you have an equation E equals to h bar square k square by twice m. From this equation, how you can determine the curvature? Basically, the second derivative will give you the curvature. Basically, the second derivative will give you the curvature. So, E equals to you write down E equals to h bar square k square by twice m and see what is the curvature. First, you do d e d k. First, you 
simplify u into d e d k that is equals to how much h bar square k by m right then d 2 e by d k square h bar square by m. Now, if you write down the value of m then what is m? m equals to h bar square by d 2 e by d k square right m equals to h bar square by d 2 e by d k square. Now, what is d 2 e by d k square? It is the curvature d 2 e by d k square is the curvature. So, if the curvature is very high for large curvature the value of m will be low. low. If the curvature is small it will be high because it is inversely proportional to the curvature. This m is known as the effective mass of carriers. It may be electron, it may be whole because I we discussed in my last class that in semiconductor both the electrons and holes take part in the conduction mechanism. Okay? Both the electrons and holes take part in the conduction mechanism unlike in metal where only the electrons take part in the conduction mechanism. So, it may be electrons, it may be holes in broad sense you can tell it as the carrier mass, but this mass has a name which is known as the effective mass of carriers, effective mass of <coughs> carriers and that is denoted by m star to differentiate between the effective mass and the rest mass say for electron. What is the rest mass of electron? What is the rest mass of electron? Yes, 10 to the minus 31 kg. So, that is not this mass to difference said between that mass 9 into 10 to the minus 31 kg and this thing a star is given at the top of m. So, basically this is the effective mass and this effective mass is directly related to the curvature that is also a unique thing for semiconductor. Here the mass is not constant let us come to this picture you see that the curvature here is very large. So, the effective mass will be less here the curvature is not so high. So, the effective mass will be high compared to the previous one and electron can stay anywhere in the curvature. So, because the curvature is different at different points in the band. So, the mass will be different at different points of the mass of, of the curve of the curve. So, basically the mass can be negative even why because in the balance band the curvature will be negative the balance band the curvature will be negative. So, the mass can be negative as well. So, that is the unique feature of the semiconducting particle carriers remember for electrons and holes this is the unique property that because of the band the carriers can have different electron effective mass or hole effective mass. And in valence band since the curvature is negative at the top of the valence band, so the mass can even be negative. Okay? Now, this mass has a direct implication on the mobility of the semiconductor. What are the main parameters for a semiconductor? Suppose you have grown a semiconductor, okay? you have synthesis one semiconductor, anything say silicon, germanium, gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, silicon carbide, gallium nitride, anything. What are the main parameters that you need to see, that you need to evaluate? One thing is the mobility of the carriers. Because for electronic application, the mobility is very much important. The mobility of silicon is less compared to gallium arsenide. The mobility of silicon, silicon mobility is less than 
gallium arsenide mobility. That means explicitly, precisely the electron mobility in silicon is less than the electron mobility in gallium arsenide. Why? Why such a difference in mobility? It is because of your band structure. Yes, effective mass is different. Since effective mass is different, so the mobility is different. How the effective mass and mobility is related? You see that mobility mu is given by Q tau by m star. Mobility Q uh, mu is given by Q tau by m star. Now, what is Q? Q is the charge and it is its value is 1.6 into the power minus 19 coulomb. m star is the effective mass that we have defined right now and what is tau? Tau is the actually the collision time, time between two successive collisions or the average time between collisions. Okay? Now, from where the collision comes? Why we are introducing the term collision in this class? Who can tell? How the collisions come into picture? Why we are more interested in tau? Basically, you see that normally in a material the electrons move at random manner without any electric field applied the motion is random in nature it is like brownian motion okay so from this point to that point from this point to that point from here to there from here to then there and so on and so forth from here to there okay they don't move in a particular direction in the absence of any electric field. But if you put an electric field, then what will happen? Yes, they will move in a particular in a particular direction, they will move in a particular direction. How? Suppose the electric field is in this direction, because electric field has a direction. So, this point if it starts from this point, so first say from 1 point to 2 point, then from 2 point to 3 point, then from 3 point to 4 point, then 4 point to then again a 5 point etcetera. So, they move in the reverse direction of the electric field. If electric field is in the negative x direction, they move in the positive x direction. You see that the, the direction is towards the reverse field direction. right? So, this is possible because of the application of the electric field. Without electric field, they do not have any net displacement, okay? but in presence of electric field, they have a velocity, which is known as the drift velocity, which is known as the drift velocity which is known as a drift velocity and this drift velocity v d is equals to mu into e e is the electric field mu is the mobility and v d is the drift velocity right now between this two movement suppose it is from one, 1 to 2 point look at the board it is 1 to 2 and then from 2 to 3, why it bends? Why not that it is moving straight? Due to collision. Yes, it is because of the collision, something is there at point 2, something is there at point 2. You are moving from material science to say aerospace engineering department okay? and suddenly there is a collision, then what will happen? you will change your direction right then again there is a collision you will change your direction so because of that collision the movement sometimes bends from one point to another point and between two successive collisions 
the distance traveled is known as the main free path and the time required is known as the time that is the tau. If you take the average then that is the tau. Suppose from point A to point B there are many tau from 1 to 2 the mean free path is say x 1 time is t 1 then from 2 to 3 the mean free path is say yes. So, you will take a large number of values and you can average. So, tau is basically the average of all such collision time between two collisions the average time. Okay. Yes, if you concept the delta velocity without any electric field without any field when you talk about field the field can be electric field it can be magnetic field. When we shall discuss about the Hall effect we shall introduce the concept of magnetic field, but in other normal discussions it is basically field means the electric field. So, without any electric field the electrons move in a random manner, manner like the Brownian motion okay. and the average distance travelled is basically 0 because it is random in nature. But if you apply an electric field they will move in the direction opposite to the direction of the applied field. Here I have shown you that an electron moves from point 1 to 2 and at point 2 there is a collision. So, it moves from 2 to 3 again there is a collision it moves from 3 to 4 and from 4 to 5 etcetera. You can tell me sir the direction is taking place very slowly obviously from 3 again 4 then again 5, but you see that the resultant direction is opposite to the field applied because of the field it happens. If there is no field then we will take the Brownian motion type of movement net yes net displacement 0, but since there is a field it will superimpose on it and it will try to move to in the direction opposite to that of the field right and between two successive collisions it will travel a distance which is known as the mean free path and the time between two successive collision is known as the collision time or relaxation time right. So, now this tau which is there in the mu expression is basically the time of the basically it is the relaxation time or the time average time during collisions. So, m star is in the denominator you see in the mobility expression m star in is in the denominator. So, that means if m star is less mobility is high and vice versa. For silicon m star is for silicon m star is high compared to Yes, compared to gallium arsenide, it is because compared to gallium arsenide, it is because of the curvature of its band. So, the origin of the mobility is also related to the curvature of the band. Okay. Let me see you, show you that this curve this diagram. You see that here this is silicon, this is silicon. So, this is the curvature and in gallium arsenide this is the curvature, this is silicon band, this is gallium arsenide conduction band. Okay, okay. The dotted are basically the electron, here the, these dots how many dots are there? 6 dots are there you find very small dots there those are electrons okay. and that these are the holes, okay. the small circles are the holes in the valence band. Here you see the same number of electrons are there and this is the holes. Now, the curvature of gallium arsenide is very high if you see this if you compare this to picture then you will see that this the curvature is high for gallium arsenide. Since the curvature is high the electron mobility will be higher for gallium arsenide than in silicon. The normal value of gallium arsenide mobility is almost 9200, but what is the unit of mobility? 
what is the unit of mobility? What is the unit of mobility? Huh? What is the okay? What is the definition of mobility? Right, drift mobility is nothing but the drift velocity per unit electric field. Okay. What is the unit of velocity? Centimeter per second or meter per second. Let us take centimeter per second. And what is the unit of electric field? Electric field. Yes, volt per meter, here it is centimeter we have taken. Because field is nothing but the applied voltage divided by the length. Volt per unit length is the electric field. So, it is centimeter square per volt second. This is the unit of mobility. Okay. And in M case, it is meter square per volt second. For silicon, the mobility is around say uh, 1300, 1400 or even less centimeter square per volt second. For gallium arsenide, it is almost 9000, 9200, 8500. So, it is almost 6 times larger, 6, 7 times higher. It is because of the band which is more curved in nature. The curvature is very large here compared to the silicon band. Right. So, this picture shows you two types of bands. Let us come here. There are two types of band. One is you see that the, the bottom of the conduction band or conduction band minimum and it is the valence band maximum and they are not on the same k value or momentum value because on the x axis the p is plotted, momentum is plotted and we know that the momentum and wave vector are all are the same thing conceptually. So, in silicon what we find that this is the valence conduction band minima and that is the valence band maxima. And these two bands if you plot against k or p whatever be the value you see that at k equals to 0 the top of the valence band or the balance band maximum is there, but not the conduction band minimum. Okay. If this is the situation, then this structure is known as the indirect band structure. This structure is known as the indirect in nature. That means, the balance band maximum and the conduction band minimum are not on the same k value, this k or momentum value. right? So, if this is the situation, then that material is known as the indirect band gap material and silicon is the indirect band gap material, germanium is the indirect band gap material. right? And if the material is indirect in nature, so far as the band is concerned, then that material is not used for optical sources, for fabrication of optical sources. Right? But you see for gallium arsenide, for gallium arsenide you see that the top of the valence band and bottom of the conduction band are on the same k value at k equals to 0. This type of band is known as the direct band gap semiconductor, gallium arsenide, indium phosphide. So, those are the examples of direct band gap semiconductor. Okay. Now, you can tell me sir why, what is the problem with the indirect band gap that the silicon is not used for the fabrication of optoelectronic sources, what is the problem? Because of this band gap, what is the associated problem? The associated problem is that you see the associated problem is that you see <coughs> the 
the associated problem is this point that means this point and that point because the k value are different. So, when one carrier say electron is now at this point, okay, electron is now at this point, here electron is there. So, its momentum is different, its momentum is different. So, if it comebacks or jumps down the valence band, so momentum conservation is required momentum conservation is required because there is a change of momentum associated here it is k 0 and what is the momentum here it is say k dash it is say k dash. So, momentum conservation is required then only it will be able to recombine with a hole in the valence band because emission of light, light is associated with the recombination of electrons and holes. First, the electrons are excited from this point to that point. Okay. Then the excited electrons comes back or jumps down the valence band where they recombine with the hole. So, during recombination the energy it releases in the form of electromagnetic radiation whether it will be photon or not that will depend on whether the recombination will be radiative or non radiative. If the recombination is radiative in nature then the light will be emitted that means photon will be emitted. Otherwise if the recombination is non radiative in nature no light will be emitted only heat will be generated. For in case of silicon since the momentum conservation is required since the momentum conservation is required because they are on the different momentum space. So, first this electron here will come to this point, they will first come to this point, but how they will come to that point? What is the mechanism? The mechanism is that some electron states must be there because in my last class we have discussed that electrons are very choosy. They will occupy only those place if there is at all a position for it because the Pauli exclusion principle is there. So, suppose in a level already if there are two electrons of opposite pins are there can a third electron be accommodated? No. So, that means electron must have the space levels. Okay? this is known as the states, the number of states available which is also there is a scientific term for that it is known as the density of states. That means, the number of states available for the accommodation of the electrons or holes in the valence conduction band or the valence band respectively. It is like suppose you have gone for an educational excursion, how many of you are here? 16 you are here right now. Okay. In M Tech, you have 16 students, you are 16. Then you went for to some place and there is a hotel where there are 200 rooms. So, that means, the density of states is 200, the density of states is 200, you are 16. So, that means, 100 divided by 16 is the probability of occupation of a particular room, right. That means, you can take more rooms that is different for electrons it is not possible. For electron suppose there are 16 electrons and there are 16 states, 16 rooms then first one room it will be accommodated by two electrons. If suppose there are 16 electrons and there are 4 rooms, what will happen? Only 8 electrons can be accommodated, but if there are 5 rooms and you have 16 students, what will happen? Yes, 
yes you will you can share with him three four students can share among themselves for electrons it is not possible because of the pauli explosion principle so that means number of states must be there number of electrons will occupy a large number of electrons will occupy those large number of states depending on the pauli's exclusion principle right so this electron when come to this place okay it depends on whether a state is available to accommodate the electron whether the state can be occupied by the electron if it can occupy it will come here at this point what will happen its momentum will be yes k equals to 0 it is coming to that momentum now there is no problem in getting down to valence band for recombination but for this case for gallium arsenide the electrons are there in k equals to 0 already so directly they can come down to jump down to valence band where they will recombine with the holes and they will give away the extra energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation or light. Okay. Here since suppose there is a state and it is coming here for silicon. Okay. Now the momentum becomes same, but the problem is elsewhere. What is the problem? That this electron can be trapped here. This is this is known as the trapped level T R A P P E D trapped level or trapped states that means that is an electronic state where the electron can be accommodated but it is due to some impurity or it is due to some vacancy or defect in it so the electron can come without that state electron cannot come if at k equals to 0 if some states are there only the electrons can come to that place but in this time what will happen time is required it is not instantaneous the electron has to search for a particular et or the trap level e suffix t trap level by that process it will be too late and the heat will be generated the recombination with the holes will not be possible okay so the because of this band structure the band structure is very much important in two ways one is that it is directly related to the mobility as the mobility is inversely proportional to the effective mass and that effective mass is basically a function of the curvature of the band okay so one point is that the band structure will determine the mobility and another thing is that the band structure will give rise to either direct or indirect type of recombination that means the recombination can be radiative or non radiative type of thing. So, the material can be used as optoelectronic sources or cannot be. Okay. So, up to that point if you have any question please feel, feel free to ask me. Yes. Yes. No, no, you cannot check for indirect band gap semiconductor, it is non radiative in nature. Okay. For direct band gap semiconductor, it is radiative in nature. Whether it will be radiative or non radiative, there are some conditions, there are some um, uh, special selection rules those will be discussed in the next semester in optoelectronic materials and applications classes. Okay. During our class on optoelectronic materials and device those selection rules or the conditions will be elaborately discussed. Sir, please tell about the depth level. Right, sure, sure. You know that in the band gap, in the band gap there is a large number of impurity levels normally in my last class we have discussed normally what happens the gap is forbidden because between these two point 
between this E g there should not be any there should not be any level. level. Level means where the electron or hole can be accommodated. Level means that level or states the same thing that means a room for electron or hole where it can be accommodated. Okay. But you see here this is a <coughs> diagram where you see that E d is shown okay, this E d dotted line and what is this E d? E d you see that 0 0.054 electron volt below the bottom of the conduction band E c is the bottom of the conduction band or the conduction band minimum. Okay. 0 0.054 electron volt is the value just below the conduction band there is a donor level or defect level. So, though ideally there should not be any electronic or hole levels in the forbidden gap, there may be some levels due to impurity or vacancy or defect. And this thing was discussed that it can be intentionally or unintentionally. Intentional levels are basically due to the doping in semiconductors. In my next class, we shall start doping of semiconductors, how doping can be done, what are the process and the resultant effects etcetera. So, you can introduce or you cannot intentionally, but during growth of the material during preparation of the material, some impurity can be unintentionally stay inside the material and they give rise to some levels which are known as the trap levels which can trap the electrons or holes okay? and it must have a polarity also. If there is a neutral level, it can trap either electrons or holes. If the trap level is positive in nature, it can trap electrons, electrons only. If the trap level is negative, holes. holes only will be trapped. So, basically this is a level which is due to the impurity or defect in a material. Sir, yes. In yes. Yes. So, uh, there is a change in, change in momentum. Yeah. So, where, where is the momentum losses? Where is the? Momentum. No, no, they have to, if they come to k equals to 0 from k dash, so basically they have to change the momentum, but momentum change associated with the finding of that trap level. If there is a trap level, then only that is possible. The extra momentum, it will transfer to that level. Obviously, and uh, trap level gain a momentum. Yes, obviously, the, the trap level momentum will be higher, right? But problem is that wh what is trap level? Trap level is not like an electron and hole that gaining of momentum it will start moving. It is a static level. Yes, it is a static level. So uh, it, if trap level is gain a momentum, so it uh, well, it can gain or it can lose also. What, what is the uh, momentum gives the kinetic energy to go to the trap? Level? What is the? Momentum gives the kinetic energy to go to the trap level. No, no, no. The electron is moving, it is not at rest. So, it will search for a particular place where it can move depending on its momentum, right? We do not know whether the momentum it will loss or it will gain. It depends where it is in the frame. Absolute value we cannot say. The physical implication is that it will try to get one a momentum conservation by coming down to E t level that E t level obviously that is that level where that momentum conservation is possible and the extra energy it will lose in the form of heat basically. The extra energy it will lose in the form of heat only. Electron is coming from k dash to k. Yes. Then k dash to k 0. K zero. Yes. Then uh, motion of electron from k dash to k 0 position. Yes. Then uh, where will be the kinetic, no, no, the kinetic energy comes to that? No, no. Electron at k dash means what is there? Electron is in the excited state. 
is it the proper state for electron? It is in the excited state. So, it will it will try to come down, it will try to come down because it is already in the excited state. Okay. What will happen here? Here also the electrons are at k 0, the holes are also at k 0, but the electrons original residence was where? In the valence band. So, when you lift the electrons, excite the electrons by some means of energy from the valence band to the conduction band, basically the electrons are energized. So, they have electron energy, they are already energized. So, they will come down to the valence band, but if they come down to valence band, problem is that the momentum conservation is also required. Here they can jumps down, but here cannot with the help of a trap level they can come. Okay. And now, where the momentum will go? Obviously, the momentum will be conserved with the help of ET. So, that means then ET and the electron will form a system where the conservation will take place, where but that is not related to your valence band holes. So, no movement is there, so uh, it may it the, the energy can be dissipated as heat. Um, so, the energy will uh, come down to this energy system. cannot come down energy if it is heat it will be dissipated through the crystal that is vibration. So, the energy is losses sir. may be energy may be loss energy may be gain energy is lost means what what energy is lost no no what energy is lost no, no let me clear that point first you have energized the electrons. So, basically you have supplied energy to the electrons from electricity or from battery, then they went from valence band to conduction band. So, already they are in the higher energy compared to the system energy. So, that energy will be lost. Yes. Could you, uh, could you tell it in a reverse manner like uh, how does the electron go from the valence band to the conduction band? In that case why does not the trap level come in into the picture? Yes, that all there also the trap level can comes into the picture. There also the trap level comes into the picture. Here you okay. So let me conclude basically because you are running out of time, and uh, we have started our discussion on conduction band and valence band, and there are say two types of energy states here. One is EC and another is EV, and there may be step levels also. The origin of the step level and the pros and cons of the tap, tap level we shall discuss in some other classes. Let us take the example of silicon here we have taken 1.1 electron volt as the band gap and this uh, the valence bands are full of electrons. Then if you supply some energy at least 1.12 electron volt the electron will move from valence band to the conduction band. Here the trap levels are not important because you are supplying the energy, you are supplying the energy. So, there is no concept or there is no necessary for the change of momentum, but when it is in an energized state in particular state say in the conduction band. So, if it jumps down to the valence band conservation of energy must be there for direct band gap semiconductor it is not a problem, but for indirect band gap semiconductor the state must be there to conserve the system momentum. Okay. So, thank you we shall uh, in the next class we shall uh, discuss about the doping in semiconductors.